And what we do is we provide, on an overall basis, transparency and accountability to the construction projects. And that, what does that mean? I'm going to spend a little more time on it through the talk, but I'm actually going to dedicate most of the talk to where is this industry heading? Um, so I'm going to step a little back. You've seen some of the metrics, um, but I'm just going to highlight them again. Uh, $10 trillion industry spending less than 1% of the revenue on IT. So hunting is more digitized. And uh, being a hunter and having grown up in Africa, I can tell you mobile phones were not the premier tool. So, so it's an industry that has a huge potential to change. 30% uh, efficiency when you're on site. It's called range time. And it doesn't matter whether you're in Australia, in Austria, in Africa, in America, it's the same numbers. When you pay somebody, they build for you 30% of the time. And why do they build? 7 to 15% of what they built is torn down and built again. It's real. You pay for it. So if you put it a little into perspective, because these are big numbers, uh, I can't understand what a trillion dollar is. I hope to one day. That's another matter. Uh, if we go east, you will meet the Wembley Stadium. It costs 700 million pounds over budget. <laughs> if we go west, you meet the Millennium Dome. 900 million pounds over what they expected it would cost. Go a little more west and you meet the Channel Tunnel, an astounding 21 billion dollars over budget. So, so these are some of the figures that hit us uh, on, on a daily basis when, when you're working in the industry. Um, and Jan has talked about why this is happening and, and I think it's also really important to understand the underlying perspective because it's a value chain that's broken. It's very important to underline that it's an industry that consists of millions of people who come to work every day and they really want to do a good job. Nobody thinks it's fantastic to go to work every day, build something and then tear it down and build it up again. But it's a value chain that's coded for mistrust. It's a value chain that's coded for disaster as, as some people say. And it's because the digital track, the communication track, is broken throughout this value chain. Right? So I'll say something as a client, and then I'll hand it over to somebody else, who will hand it over to somebody else, who will hand it over to somebody else. There's no clear communication path throughout it. And another very, very important pillar is it's an industry that's based on punitive contracts. It's basically based on mistrust. If I go 40 years back, ah, a little less, 35 years back, and I went to town and I met a lovely lady, the first thing I did was not sign a contract of what is going to happen when we leave each other. That's what you do in the industry. The first thing you do when you get together to build something is sign a contract about how are you going to solve things when you go. Um, and and that's, that's the challenge that this industry is facing. If, if we go two years back, three years back, when, when we were talking to a lot of contractors and a lot of clients, um, the general consensus was it's never going to change. It's been like that for 50 years. It's not going to change. We come from a lot of different industries with a lot of different goals for the very first time. It's very complex. Um, it's always been like that. It's never going to change. Companies like ours, we keep pounding on that belief, and it is going to change. And I think that's also why we gather here today, because we need to look at the examples that are actually proving that it is changing, and we need to actually start trusting that we are at that pivotal point that Jan pointed out. So I'm going to add to the part three concrete examples. Um, and there was a question about is the government actually leading legislation-wise on this change, and I believe that they should. And one example is the biggest Copenhagen, oh, sorry, the biggest municipality in Denmark, the Copenhagen municipality. They went out and they said, we're tired of having 295 contractors supplying our school projects. So for the next four years, one contractor is gonna win every single school project, and we're gonna guarantee a fixed revenue on the projects. And any project that we give them, they can say yes or no to. So one contractor, through a bidding process, together with an architect and an advisor, won 450 million euros of guaranteed revenue. It's called the trust framework, very fitting. Uh, they started six months ago, and the first six projects have been delivered ahead of time with a little budget. 
and everybody in the trust corporation is actually making money. And people are pounding at it from the industry saying, they're skewering the business. Uh, they're, they're, they're favoring somebody. No, they're actually taking care of taxpayers' money. They're getting what we're, they're, they're getting the money back to the ones who are actually paying for it. Right? And they're acting prudently by changing the contractual front. Another personal example that, that it can actually happen is we were followed 18 months by the University of Construction on a uh, project that was uh, had some problems in, in, in Copenhagen, 500 million construction project of a technical university. And the measurements that came back, not necessarily only on the software, but on the change that happened within the 500 people on the project, was a measurable 7% lower total construction sum by using transparent communication. And this is, this is a scientist who's not paid by any of us, who's actually measuring an output. And the rock star example, uh, take Mr. Elon Musk, who made a $50 million bet a few months ago with the Australian government, and say, I'll build the biggest battery that's ever existed in the middle of the Australian desert, and I'll do it in 100 days. If I don't do it in 100 days, you'll get the battery pack for free. And this was a project that people had looked at and said, this is going to take a year, two years, three years. They did it in 63 days. So it can be done. Um, and and that, that also leads to why we're here today. Right? It, it, it's at a tipping point right now. And one of the things I, I think we keep reiterating is what's, what's going to happen? Uh, what's the impact going to be? Because there's going to be a lot of, of course, there's going to be carnage. There's going to be uh, people who go out of business, people who don't accept the change. But what's the industry that's going to emerge after that? Um, my view is that clients and uh, developers are going to take control. They're going to step in and actually start owning the data. I had an interesting meeting this morning with somebody who were, were, were looking at the government, and I, I had to tell them, it's crazy that you as a government, building for billions of pounds every year, you don't own the data. You don't own the value of what you're actually building with the taxpayer's money. You need to step in and take control. So that's, step, that, that, that's change number one that's coming in. Clients and developers will start taking control again. Another one, construction workers are slowly transforming into knowledge workers. You need to invest in that change. We're going to be part of it. We're out there educating them. But, but it's amazing. If you're a mason, start learning robotics. Right? You are going to change the way this workforce works. The SAP days are over. Uh, I'm not necessarily important for this crowd to know, but it's important for a lot of people to know that the one ring to rule them all when you're talking about digital systems and changes are over. It's about building open systems. It's about freeing up the data. It's about making it easy to integrate. Um, because that, that's not where we, we're not going to make our money by hoarding in the data. Um, and is it happening now will be, I think, my, my latest point. Uh, and, and I'll add two other examples to that. Because if you believe that the change is coming, then the next question will be, when, when is it coming? Um, and I can point to two concrete examples. Uh, Orco, um, who is the owner of Primavera, so one of the most used 2D planning tools, uh, bought Textura a few years ago. They just spent a little more than a billion pounds on Apex, another digital player. And uh, last month, SoftBank, uh, not last week, SoftBank put in $980 million in Katera, which is a three-year-old digital construction company. So the change is actually happening now. And, and I think we, we're, we're seeing a lot of examples here. I'm actually now then going to be a good pupil and finish ahead of time, because that was my closing <laughs> remark. Thank you.